Hey guys, Amanda here. This video is number four in the series, 33 Traits of the Narcissistic Mother, and it comes out of the book, Will I Ever Be Good Enough? Healing the Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers by Carol McBride. And I will put the information in the description box. Okay, so I have two examples. Number one is uh, when I had broken up with someone, I had been in a relationship with them for 10 months, and when we broke up, I was upset. I was crying, you know, I just, I was grieving. And I had gone to my mother for support and um, I didn't think anything of it at the time, but she had made the comment that I shouldn't be this upset for a relationship that only lasted 10 months. And, oh, hold on. Hmm. Excuse me. And at the time, um, obviously when you're grieving, you're not thinking clearly. So I thought that there was something wrong with me. I thought, well, you can't be upset if it only lasted this amount of time and not, you know, an exact year or something. I started thinking in that way. And um, shortly after, I had started going down the counseling route. And um, I came to find out that, you know, the grieving process, there is no time frame. You grieve how you grieve, and that's how it is. And nobody should ever tell you any different. And no one should tell you that what you're feeling, you shouldn't be feeling. So that's an example I felt like she didn't have any empathy for what I was feeling. She basically told me to get over it, in a sense. So number two is when I was in labor, and um, she was at work, and I called her, and she came back. And she had one of the her coworkers' phones in her apron because she forgot to give it back to her because I called and she was looking at the phone um, and it was of baby pictures from that other person. And I begged her not to leave. I said, please give it to her tomorrow. She'll understand I'm in labor. But she didn't listen to me and she left. I was terrified and she was gone for two hours. And I felt, you know, very, I felt abandoned and that I, what I was going through was less important and somebody getting their phone back, which could have waited till the next day. And that person would have understood. But no, she had to. So in that respect, I felt like my feelings, yet again, were dismissed and validated. And that there wasn't any... It was like she was looking through me. You know, my emotions didn't seem to matter. I'm sorry, I'm, little, I'm all over the place. But um, yeah, so... For me, those two examples, I think, fit the question. I think they fit, excuse me, what, um, you know, the lack of empathy for your feelings. Like, I was scared. I was terrified. I had never had a baby before. I had never felt that kind of pain before. I didn't know what to do. And she left me alone. And during those two hours, my labor went, whoosh, like, really fast. So uh, it was terrifying. It was extremely terrifying and um, you know it's just one of those things that um, it is what it is but at least I know that if I ever were to have another baby um, which I don't plan on ever having another baby again but if I did I would definitely hope to have a second support person just in case <laughs> Because I, I would want to be prepared, <laughs> just in case. You never know what's going to happen. So, yeah. But um, I hope those examples are something that you can relate to in terms of the invalidating of the emotions, dismissing them, putting something else as priority that really isn't as high as a priority that, you know, that person is making it out to be and just disregarding your feelings altogether. So, um no, you're not alone. There are many people who go through this with their mothers, different things, you know, some are worse, some are, you know, it's just a whole gamut of things. So, yeah. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you related in some way or found some support of some kind. And I love you all. I hope you all are taking care of yourselves and are doing well. And I will see you in my next video. Peace and love.